So I was just building a new coding project earlier this morning and I realized that most people don't have any clue how to build projects properly. It's one of the most common problems that I hear you guys talk about in the comments and I realized I've never actually properly shown you how I actually do this. So while I was building this project, I realized that the process I use is actually extremely simple and extremely easy. You just need to sort of get this. You just need to sort of understand how to do this. So in a moment, we're just going to go straight into a screen sharing. I haven't scripted this video at all, but I'm just going to talk you through exactly how I was thinking through on how to start this project. How I was thinking through how to sort of build the first version of it and how I'm now thinking through like expanding it with new features and things like this. So let's get into it. So the project I am building is this one. It's a simple cost of living comparison tool between two cities. So you can select a city one from here. Let's say we select Abu Dhabi, select city two. Let's say we select Austin, Texas. And then the cool thing here is that you can essentially insert your current cost of living in your current Current location. This is just like the version one. This is not ready. I'm literally in the middle of building this. I just thought of making this video as I was sort of doing this. So I'm recording this right now. So let's say a cost for groceries is this right now. Uh, restaurants is this right now. Rent is currently $2,000 a month and then whatever for the rest of it. Then what this essentially does is that I have a bunch of data inside of my backend, inside of this JSON file that I have got from online on cost of living for different cities. And then it basically uses sort of averages across the different data to then estimate based on your lifestyle, what your cost of living would be in your new city. So if you currently pay this much to live in Abu Dhabi, then according to this data for this same standard of lifestyle, you should pay around this much in Austin. Anyway, the details of these projects are not important. What I want to focus on is how I was able to go from zero to this in essentially like what, two hours or something like that. So everything starts with just getting the idea. How did I get the idea for this project? Well, I think project ideas, they should always revolve around something that you're actually interested in. Now, I am currently traveling the world as a digital nomad and thinking about different locations and especially comparing the costs in all of these different locations is something that I am super, super interested in. So naturally, this topic is something that I am always thinking about throughout the day. So therefore, it is a lot more likely that I'm gonna come across problems or ideas relating to these things that I am interested in. And that is how at one point I simply realized that there is no real tool that can allow me to, based on my lifestyle, compare exactly how much that equivalent lifestyle would cost in a different city. Now there are different tools that perhaps give me some averages and things like this, but not exactly what I wanted. So then at some point I just thought, hmm, why would I not just build this myself? And I started thinking about how I might be able to do something like this. And I realized that it doesn't actually have to be that difficult. So for you, the number one tip on how to get ideas is think about the things you're interested in and then think about the problems you have encountered in those things. And out of those, just think about one simple thing that you think you could potentially build. And even if you don't think you could build it, just try like challenge yourself to think what could be a simple, even if it's not perfect, a simple way to sort of solve that problem that you've encountered using some sort of a website or an app or something like that. And that is how you can really start generating idea. So after you have your idea, how do you get started? For, well, for this, we're gonna open up a very simple tool. You might have heard of this before. It's called ChatGPT. And this is just precisely what I did. I'll show you the exact chat that I have for this project in ChatGPT. I was actually using two tools here. I was using also this one, Claude AI, because I'm actually sort of testing out this new AI tool for a newsletter article that I'm making. I'm sort of comparing the two. By the way, if you wanna subscribe to my free newsletter to get that newsletter article, then you can subscribe to it down below in the description. And if you subscribe to my free newsletter, you get a free article every single month around coding, tech, and updates around my life and my office and things like that. And you also get my free computer science degree template as a free bonus simply for signing up. And of course, if you don't like the content, you can unsubscribe at any time. But anyway, this is how I got started. The very first message of this chat, I simply told ChatGPT, I am making a React app to compare cost of living in two cities, blah, 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 blah. And at first it doesn't really give me the code. It just gives me like how to get started or something. So I stop this and I just tell it explicitly, make me a React skeleton for this app. So then what it does is it simply gives me 
code to get started with this application. At first, this is extremely simple, but this is very important because the biggest hurdle for most people with projects is not actually not knowing what to do, it's simply procrastinating and not even getting started. So if you can just tell yourself, okay, I'm not gonna actually code now. All I'm gonna do is spend two minutes giving a prompt to a ChatGPT to give me some starter code that just gives me a simple skeleton to get started with the project. You're gonna have something on the screen. That thing alone is actually gonna push you to get started because once you have that, then it's so much easier to keep going once you actually have something inside of your code file. So that is the biggest tip that I can give. And with these AI tools, like you can often get a pretty good starting point with just a simple prompt like this. And so then how do I keep going with the project? Well, actually, my goal is always to be as lazy as possible. That is tip number three. Be as lazy as possible. Abuse the hell out of these AI tools as much as you possibly can. So usually in the beginning, because what AI tools are really good for is coding very generic stuff. So giving you very generic code, like very simple stuff. In the beginning of the project, what you're building is probably gonna be quite generic and quite simple. So you can often get quite far with literally just prompting the AI. So after I got this starter code, what I simply started doing is thinking, okay, what would I need to do next? And then simply telling AI, for example, make it into a dropdown to select city. So rather than having to type out the city, I wanted it to be a dropdown like it is right here. And then I told it to give some just test data for all of those cities. And then it did it for me. And then I just copy paste these files. So I think for the first like 30 minutes or something like that of coding this, I didn't actually write a single code. I was just literally prompting AI for as much as possible. And then at some point, you're gonna get to the point where you're actually gonna have to start thinking and you're gonna have to figure out, okay, where do I actually wanna take this? And then it's actually gonna become easier which is code it yourself rather than prompting AI because these code files are gonna get so long. So at some point, I start thinking, okay, what kind of data do I need? Things like this. And I find online like data for the cost of living. So when you're programming, your job as the human isn't really to write the code. Your job as the human is to think about what you need to code. Like when you're building a coding project, thinking about what you need to code and thinking of the logic of your project is much, much more important than actually the pedantic task of writing the code. So that is why I essentially outsource the actual writing of the code to this AI as much as possible. But of course, if you as the programmer don't have an understanding of how code works, how code logic works, like different file types, things like this, different frameworks, not knowing what you should use and when, then of course, none of this is going to work. You're still not going to need to have the understanding of coding to be able to do this process so you can intelligently prompt the AI and things like this. So if you don't feel like you have those foundations yet and you wanna learn the foundations of programming to get to the level of skill where you can actually use this process properly, then I do have my paid program, Python Developer Bootcamp, where I teach you all of this. And I also teach you to get hired, like how to navigate the job market. So if you wanna go from zero to a hireable software developer, then I recommend you check that program out down below in the description. Now, the last step of the process is how do I actually keep moving on the project? How do I keep adding new features? How do I know what features to add? Well, essentially at any stage of coding this project, I'm just thinking about one thing. What is the next thing? What is the next most important thing that I should add to this project? So I'm at this stage right here, right now. I'm just gonna do this live with you. So I have this where I can select these cities. It's gonna give you my cost that I input myself and then it's gonna estimate my cost right here for the next city. What could be the next most important thing that I might want to add? Well, what I really wanna do is, let's say anyone goes to this website and they don't know their exact costs in all these different categories, what I probably wanna have is some sort of a simple, like a basic mode where they can just input this one number and then the app is gonna just aggregate across all the cost of living data for the new site and just give a very rough estimate for the cost of living in the new city. And then there's gonna be some sort of a toggle where they can switch on an advanced mode if they wanna give all of this detailed data to give a more detailed estimate. So that is probably what I would do next. So I'm just thinking logically, what do I actually wanna see in this application? And I'm not thinking what is one random thing that I might wanna add. Obviously, there's many things I could add, like this UI isn't exactly beautiful, but changing the UI isn't as important as this new feature that I just described that I want to add. So I'm thinking in, 
in order of importance out of all the things that I want to add, if I could only add one new thing to this application, what would it be? And that is the order in which I am adding new things. And obviously the more you code, the more and more you're going to get to the stage where the things that you're adding are less and less and less important. And then it's up to you to basically decide like how far do you want to take this? When is the project ready and things like this? But again, what I would essentially do is first, just go to ChatGPT and describe to it, like basically what I just described to you, see what ChatGPT gives me. If it is good, I can either use it. And But usually the further on I get on the project, the more it gets to the point where ChatGPT can get me a starting point for the thing that I want to add. But then I'm going to spend a bunch of time just manually tweaking the code and things like this to actually get it to look exactly like I want to. And the more it gets to this point, the more it's actually going to become more efficient for me to do the code tweaking myself rather than telling ChatGPT to do this because the more complex the projects get, the more the stuff that I'm doing is something that is less generic and therefore something that ChatGPT is not going to be as good at. And that is really where your programming skills are going to become needed. So that is the exact process. I hope this video was helpful to you. It was a very sort of different video to what I'm used to making. This was not scripted at all. I'm just literally like spitting to you exactly what I am thinking as I am coding this. And as I was coding this literally an hour before I filmed this video. Again, if you're looking to learn more about the tech industry, tips around learning to code, I have my free newsletter down below. And if you're looking to invest into yourself, if you're looking for one guided program to make you into a software developer, that goes into much more detail around everything around learning to code and actually how to build these projects with actual project ideas and things like this, then I do have my paid program. So check out those resources down below and I'll see you on the next one.